Jonathan was an awesome man, and I don't have to tell any of you that. Um, but he was unique in one way specifically to me, and that was that he was, he was a singular individual. And what I mean by that is everybody in this room that knew him knew the same person. Jonathan refused to be a different person to anyone, and I think we all loved that about him. I'm going to paraphrase an old saying that a person doesn't really, they, they die and they move on and they go to heaven if they believed in Christ. Um, but in actuality, there's a certain part of Jonathan in every single one of us. It's comforting to know when I look into the eyes in this room that there are memories I haven't shared with Jonathan yet that I will share by conversing with you and we'll all get a laugh out of some of the antics and things that he's done. But one of the things I wanted to say specifically when I got up here was this. Um, the first person that knew that I was going to ask Carrie to marry me was Jonathan, because Jonathan had this strange obsession with climbing things. So for whatever reason, he decided to climb the tree in front of my house, which on a whim I had written kind of my thoughts about Carrie with a pocket knife. Um, <laughs> so... <laughs> Whenever I told, uh, when I told my friends, Jonathan just kind of smirked, and and I said, well, well, well what do you, you knew something. How did you know something? He's like, well, I climbed and I saw so. <laughs> um, but you know, he never told anyone. Just I, I don't know. He's such a neat guy, and uh, I'm gonna miss him a lot. I know that everyone is, but I would encourage you to share those memories you haven't shared yet with Jonathan with his friends. Learn you know, more about him through the various stories that are gonna to be told today and will be told for years to come because he supplied us with plenty. So, thank you. As many of you know, uh, 10 years ago, I was brought into this family, uh, to the Leach family. And one of the first things before I even got home was a picture of my brothers and sisters and they told me about each one and I looked at Jonathan and I thought that's the one I'm going to spend time with and he always made time for me it made me feel special he wasn't just a brother he was a friend a mentor and a counselor and I will always keep his family in my precious sight forever. Thank you. I have known Jonathan Leach my entire life, and I have to say that this October 12th will be a lot less joyous of a birthday without Jonathan here to share it with me. For the last four or five years, Jonathan would have a costume party for his birthday. He was quirky, but he was never too old to have fun and still play dress up. <laughs> he could take any ordinary moment and make it an extraordinary memory. I have arachnophobia, the great fear of spiders. And Jonathan loved spiders. <laughs> you can well imagine the end of the story, yes. Lots of screaming and jumping around took place more than once. However, I only learned last night that Jono had given my mom this container of spiders to scare me with at the right time. <laughs> Fortunately for me, I think they scared mom more times in her closet than she had the opportunity to scare me. I remember in those younger years, Jonathan taking the time to entertain my boredom when the leeches with only older kids at that time would come over for dinner, which was quite often. He would sit down and expand the imagination of a young child by telling the most amazing, funny, suspenseful, and captivating stories with voice changes and all. He became like real family when his brother Michael married my sister Tiffany. But I can say for a few other young people in this room, my age and younger, that despite the age difference, he was a friend to us as well. One last funny story is when one of my little nephews came through our door after they had been up at Jono's, 
and he says, well, I sure had a good time at that Uncle John o Poodle's house. <laughs> I don't think there's one of us here today who will forget that wild hair of his, including his little nephew. <laughs> when God creates each of us, he puts a few of his attributes inside us. One of these attributes that John had was a piece of God's imagination. His imagination was fascinating. I loved hearing him spin a tale on whatever was entering his head at the moment or things that he'd been thinking about the week before. But it wasn't just stories that I'm talking about. It was the way his mind worked. Jonah thought on a different level than a lot of us. And when I say level, I don't mean that Jonah was above or below us. He was just different. He could start telling you something that you thought was completely insane, but after he had time to explain it to you on your level, you'd walk away realizing that what he had said previously was absolutely amazing. Another attribute that John had was passion. Passion is what fueled a lot of our arguments. He was a searcher of truth and a hater of lies. Oh, how he hated lies. On more than one, okay, on many occasions, he would be passionately trying to explain to me how I was wrong and he was right. Many of these occasions, he would end up being right. And I am so thankful they took time to explain to me the truth on a lot of issues. How many of you here can remember Jono's laugh? Unique. He had a sense of humor unlike most people I know. The awesome thing about his joy was that he could light up a room. I loved to hear Jono laugh. So in closing, I want you all to know that I loved my best friend, my brother-in-law, my confidant, and to him, I will say that I miss you. I wish you were here. And brother, happy trails. How to express the sorrow, the hole you left behind. <laughs> How much I will miss you and how much I love you. But I also want to remember with them and to laugh with them. Because when I think of you, I see your smiling face and I hear you laughing. So many memories. How do I find just a few to tell? I'll try. How about the time when we were kids? and used to turn me upside down and shake me. <laughs> Big meanie. <laughs> Once I yelled at you to drop me. <laughs> you did, literally. <laughs> Jumping forward in time, every time I'd get pregnant, you'd say, maybe it's twins. <laughs> you were so excited. I would tell you, if it is, you get to take a couple weeks off and come help me. You also would tease Josh and I about how mushy we were. We tease you back, just you wait. <laughs> then came Hannah. If anyone beat us in the mushy department, it was you two. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't even tease you too much because I was so happy for you. <sighs> I, wish you I will miss you more than I can say. You were the close friend I never meant to take for granted. And the one I just assumed I would get to keep for a long time. I am astounded at the number of people's lives you have touched in just 30 years. You meant so much to my family, I didn't realize how much you meant to so many others. We will love you and are looking forward to the day when your laughter will meet us when it's our turn to come home. Until then, we will spend our time doing our best to have no regrets, loving the wonderful woman you made part of our family before you had to go. Good choice, by the way.
Spoiling Tico for you and doing our best not to miss you more than we can stand. Love you tons. See you then. I got a couple things to say about, to say about Jonathan. I didn't know him as long as I knew uh, Micah or Lucas or any other guys. But uh, about a year ago, we were at Jonathan's house. Just been Jonathan and I, not long before their wedding. We ate pizza. Very interesting pizzas. <laughs> we, uh, what, what, one of them was almost normal. One of them was like a pepperoni pizza with something else that wasn't exactly normal, but it was a more, the more normal out of the two. The other one had, uh, um, I think anchovies and pineapples and uh, banana bell peppers and I don't remember half the stuff, but it was gross. <laughs> I couldn't eat it. I, 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 I didn't eat it. Um, I, Jonathan, Jonathan thought it was quite interesting and he, he ate it. <laughs> and I made fun of him for it. But um, yeah, later that night we, uh, we had fun. We hung out. Um, yeah, I guess that was the last, the last real time that I, that I actually got to uh, just to hang out. And um, yeah, we would always call each other on our birthdays and uh, wish each other a happy birthday. And the first time he called me, I, I was about 11, and that that really meant a lot to me. And um, yeah. That's all I have to say. Just a couple of years after we moved here, we started going to the same church that Jonathan was going to, and Jono was the first person who reached out to me and was my friend. And as a lot of you know, he was a friend to many people, but he was... <sighs> I mean, despite the age difference, and I guess he saw a fellow weirdo in me. <laughs> so he's like, ah, there's one. <laughs> but um, I had the, uh, the privilege of uh, living with Jono for almost two years. And uh, I uh, was booted out, as it were, when uh, he took Hannah to be his wife. <sighs> Many great memories with Jono. Many times eating weird food with him. He had this, his idea of cooking was either taking a frozen pizza and putting things that, like Trey said, normally don't go on a pizza and saying, wow, I cooked. I was like, that's not cooking, Jonah. <laughs> <laughs> or he would, or he would take like a pot of stew or whatever and like pour a bunch of canned chicken. Can, he was big on canned chicken. That was like a staple for him. And he just like let that simmer. I was just like, it's edible. He's like, yeah, I cooked. I was like, no. <laughs> but no. Jono was a joy to be with. And like many people said, he was loyal. He was faithful. He was faithful. And he was always there for you. And I will miss him very much. And it was a privilege to know him. Thank you. I just love hearing all these young men and women talk, but for variety's sake, somebody <laughs> with gray hair. <laughs> but what I want to comment is the the faithfulness of God's word in what I call generational continuity, mm. passing on righteousness from generation to generation. You know, the Lord says that those who turn away from him will be cursed to the third and fourth generation, but those who love him and obey him will be blessed to the thousandth generation. I also, and I'm not sure how to say this, I heard a study one time about children who lost one of their parents when they were young and there was a powerful difference between those who say the father left and abandoned them versus say went to the army and got killed or something there's a, a huge difference in how those children grow up 
And it's like God secures the testimony for the child that never knew his father. And I also, a few years ago, my wife had this idea. Says, See, with three boys, I kind of developed a uh, what every young boy needs to know about being a man speech. <laughs> and my wife says, there's a whole bunch of young men out of high school, not married. You should invite them all over and give it to them. So we did. And Jonathan was there. And I was amazed at the, the insight he already had and the determination he had for his family. This was before you guys got together. For his family and raising his children and the godly way he wanted to raise them. I mean, he spoke about it a lot. and He was right there in the middle of it. And he had a good head on his shoulders, which is a testimony, again, to what God calls us to, generational continuity. The, the, our love of the Lord and our knowledge of the Lord, we pass it on. We, we protect those under us. And it's a heritage and an, an inheritance. We receive that inheritance. We pass on that heritage to our kids. So, Lord bless you. Well, my first memory of Jonathan was his laugh, actually. It was about 11, 12 years ago. We were tearing down a house with the Olsons and a bunch of other people. And I remember that laugh. It turned my head, actually. I snapped my head around, <laughs> saw this guy with bushy red head and beard. And, and uh, I was a little shocked, to say the least. But uh, <laughs> And who would have known that he would have been my brother-in-law? And uh, definitely grew to love the man. Um, he valued little children. He looked at them. He talked with them. What better way to leave an impact on society around us? I remember when my sister, she uh, she was 16, and she came to me and she told me that she liked Jonathan, and uh, and I was overjoyed. But when I don't know, she was about 25 when they got married, and uh, and it was a joy to see my sister happy. She was she adored him. She loved him and it was it was obvious that he he adored her right back. He treasured her. And um, and they were happy together. They had a beautiful little girl together and that's all I really have to say. Well as most of you know, um, I've had the privilege of working with Jonathan the last several months. And uh, wasn't really his thing, so I would give him a hard time because he couldn't keep up with me. And I don't regret it. I mean, had I done anything different, he would have called my bluff. And uh, at the end of the day, we were still friends. And no matter the disagreement we had, we were still friends and we still loved each other. And uh, I mean, I'd, lunch break was long over, and I'd walk around the corner, and he's sitting there staring at his phone, just looking at it. And I'm like, Jonathan, we're working. He's like, hang on. And I walk over, and it's a picture of Hannah. And I'm like, dude, you've been married a year. Come on, just, just get back to work. And he just goes, he just goes but she's hot. And I'm like, we got we to gotta work, Jonathan. So we, I drag him back to work, and we finish out the day. And um, it was, I just, I wish I would have known how much that would mean to me later. And I would have appreciated it more. And it was still fun, but I just... I would have appreciated it more in the moment. Uh, like everyone else has said, he loved Jesus more than anything. And next to that, he loved his family. And that's how he would want to be remembered. And that's how I'll always remember him. I remember Jonathan because he listened to the little children. We'd always be sitting in the corner and playing with toys and stuff, and he'd be there talking to us and telling us Bible stories and encouraging us to be creative, even though we were not really doing anything with the toys except breaking them. I mean, we, I kind of 
I've known Jonathan for years and years. He's like the first thing person I can remember when we started going to church down in Kiski. And he was the first one I remember because I didn't have friends there. I was kind of stuck in the corner. No one wanted to listen to me. And Jonathan would talk to me. And uh, after a while, I mean, he would show me how to make the, the little pipe cleaner miniatures. And he showed me how to do all these things. And I was fascinated by him. He was an amazing man. Yeah, it was. I, that's what I'll remember from him. He listened to people who didn't have much say in things. Mine isn't very long. Um, we all know Jonathan. He all loved books. Um, on a few occasions, I never really got to talk to him too much because you know he was always busy chatting with somebody because he was like that. He loved to talk. He loved making people feel like their opinion was important. So anyway, he all he loved books. Um, one author that we would talk about, he's like, you have to read Lemony Snicket, <laughs> and you just can't hate Lemony Snicket. Um, there's a quote that I wanted to read that I think kind of pertains to this. So it's about death. It is a curious thing, the death of a loved one. We all know that our time in this world is limited and that eventually all of us will end up underneath some sheet, never to wake up. And yet it is always a surprise when it happens to someone we know. It is like walking up the stairs to your bedroom in the dark and thinking there is one more stair than there is. Your foot falls down through the air, and there is a sickly moment of dark surprise as you try to readjust the way you thought of things. And that quote has never spoke more to me than right now, all of us, I'm sure. You just don't expect this kind of stuff. Another quote is that he did, you only live once, but if you do it right, once is enough. And Jonathan's life was more than enough. And I love him because he made my sister so happy. And I couldn't ask for anything more. All right, that's it. <laughs> I have to talk from a mama heart point of view. There was a season when these guys invaded our home amazingly. And it was amazing. I loved to cook and they loved to eat. <laughs> they invested in Austin and Andrew and Dave and I could not have asked for a sweeter season because the imprint that they left on them was tremendous. One time Jonathan was over and he was fascinated with plants. I don't know if it was just in my house, but he was very fascinated with plants. And there was a plant and he said, this is in South America and they use this. It numbs your mouth. And he took off a leaf and he's starting to chew it. And it's supposed to work, but I'm not sad and that works very fast. <laughs> Do you remember that? So that was during that season, but it was so sweet and I just so loved it. Hair, beard, miss him coming down Adam's grade. I miss him going down Tom Taha or whatever they call it this time. Just, I'd wave and he's out of the window. <laughs> every time, almost every day. I just, I love his heart. I loved that he didn't stop at what he saw on the outside. I loved that God gave him a natural ability to see the heart. And I love that he mentored and he walked in his gifting that God gave him, naturally. And the swords and, and the guns for me, <gasps> So you don't know it, but I've been praying all these years. <laughs> and I love it. I love that they took Andrew to get what was supposed to be this big of a knife. It was my mama. I saw this. I'm sure it wasn't. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, I just I just love him for that. I love him. And guys, I love that you get to see that. God bless. It's confession time, I would say. <laughs> a few years ago, when he, when, when he called, I remember that day. Honey, Jonathan called. He called. He called. Now I'm freaking out, right? And this is what I'm going through. And I'm like, 
we're going to let him see her. <laughs> it's like, because my daughter's heart was already there. And I knew it was there. And I'm so very glad. Because I have never seen my daughter. You can just look at those pictures. Look at the, the wedding pictures and the joy and that smile. And I'm just, I am so thankful. All I can see is the joy of my daughter. And what mother would not want that? Jonathan, the great man of God, he loved my daughter. And I love the fact that he did. He, he was contrary. He went against the flow. And, and it's true that some of these guys said, it's just, it's, it's like, he loved the least of these. He went out and he pointed out those who were in the corner, those who were different looking and everything else, and he drew them in. That is Christ-likeness. And I just, um, I, I just praise God for Jonathan and for the good and everything that he was. They say that you will be the same man you are today, five years from now, except for the books that you read and the people that you meet. Jonathan was peculiar. Every time he'd come to me with a story that he had written or a piece of a story, and I would just scratch my head about where he got the ideas and how he thought that they were amazing. <laughs> I tried putting some of his some of his poems to, to tune one time and it was impossible. <laughs> uh, last year during the fires in Woodland, I had the joy of fighting on a team with Jonathan. Even outside of that, he was loyal. That is a word that would sum Jonathan's life up pretty good. He was first loyal to God. He was loyal to his family. And he was loyal to his friends. Jonathan changed me because of the way that he loved me. He loved everybody. Yes, he had his differences with people. Yes, he couldn't understand people. But in the end, he loved people. And he loved... It boggled me how he would sit down with all the little children. And it just reminded me of Jesus sitting down with the little children and saying, Let the little children come. And just his overabundance of joy and, and love for those kids that overflowed to me and to everyone around him is what I will remember him for. So from Jonathan, find Jesus and love him because he did a lot for you. So... Yoni was a very good friend of mine. We roomed together, and, uh, you know, somebody like Yoni, there's so many memories, you can't possibly list them. He always said, don't cry at my funeral. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lost cause. He, uh... He was a good man. You can't say that about a lot of people. He uh, taught me a lot. He was always faithful, front to back, first to respond. He joked about his death, said that I'd die first, because I was the more reckless. And he said when he left to um, remember him in glory. So. Remember his legacy. It was a good legacy. He left a good legacy. And he loved Jesus. And if he could say one thing right now, he was always confused by people's lack of belief. He often said, I just really don't get it. Why wouldn't you love Jesus? And if he could say one thing, it would be, love Jesus. So, that's his legacy. He was a good man, and he was missed. And, uh, Thank you all very much for coming.
Yes, Jonathan was a very, very, very good friend, my oldest and closest friend without a question. If there are two things that could characterize him, it's one, that he was a madman. <laughs> Anyone that will remember him well, he had that appalling, ragged, patched <laughs> story coat. He fancied himself the good Pied Piper. <laughs> now, he'd gather children all around and tell them stories, and uh, he could relate to the Pied Piper as one who had children follow him. And uh, the second the second facet of his character was that by worldly accounts, he was a fool. As Paul says, and the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to those who are being saved is the power of God. And if there's anything that Jonathan loved more than talking about God and spiritual things, it was Bigfoot and <laughs> cryptozoology, all that sort of stuff. And many are the times that I would get a text message late in the night saying, hey, what do you think of vampires? Or what do you think of dwarves? <laughs> well, another important thing that he couldn't understand why people wouldn't believe in Jesus. The incarnation was so second nature to him. It went without question. And if God could come down and don human flesh and die to save mankind, to bring man up, to serve as royalty and princes and brothers and friends in his kingdom, then anything was possible. If there's one thing you take away from this, love Jesus. That is what Jonathan would wish.